Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ashley. I also go by Ashwar and Ashwar Plays. And today I am bringing you guys a tutorial video. So I think my most asked question in all of my videos pertains to my save file. I always get questions about where do I get all of my lots from? How are all the NPC sims not ugly? And this is all because of my personal save file that I've been working on for such a long time. This is probably the longest project I have ever worked Worked on. This save file is six years in the making and unfortunately I am unable to share it because I am literally using like 25 gigabytes worth of CC for this save file. So to make up for this I thought I'd share you guys my tips on how to make your own personal save file and how you can make it very realistic and very detailed and make your gameplay much more engaging for you. And so I do have to give a fair warning that making a save file is very time consuming. As I said before this is something I've worked on for six plus years and it's still nowhere near done but I will say that I highly recommend everyone to make their own personal save file it is very rewarding especially when you can see the save file come to life um, you guys see it come to life in my let's play series and so we're gonna break down this video into different segments the first one is I'm going to show you guys an in-depth tutorial on how to make a custom save file from scratch and then I'll talk about all the customization you can do with your save file share all of my favorite lots with you guys as well as some of my favorite townies from the gallery. Then I'll go over mods that I use in my game to add an extra layer of realism to my save file and then we'll end off the video with my favorite save files from other creators in the sims community. Oh I forgot to mention okay so this is a new sim her name is Georgia and she is one of my new model sims so you'll definitely be seeing more of Georgia on this channel. Okay and one more thing before we get into this video I wanted to quickly thank you guys so much for 25,000 subs on this channel. I am just so grateful for you guys to show my appreciation i'm hosting another giveaway for you guys i am giving away two game packs of the winner's choice i will have the link to the giveaway in the description and please be sure to read the rules before entering the giveaway the giveaway will end on january 21st at midnight and the two winners will be contacted within the next few days of the giveaway end date all right, so we're gonna start off on how to create a custom save file. So there are multiple ways that you can go about doing this. You can create one off of an existing save file that you have, or you can also just start from scratch and make one from the save file that is provided by Maxis. And so that is what I did with my save file. So to do this, what you'll do is you'll click on new game. And then of course you'll be prompted to create a story. We don't want to do that. <laughs> and we'll get a random sim. I'm just going to randomize all of this. You can also um, grab a sim from the gallery and use them if you like, but we're just going to do this random sim for now. All right. So now that we've given all the aspirations, the traits and the name, we're going to be able to play now press save and play. If you have seasons, you'll be prompted to select a season to play in. And I always choose spring. And so now that we picked a season, we're going to plop this townie down. I'm just going to put him here. So once you're done customizing your sim and you've done all the steps to create a new game, you're going to immediately go to manage worlds. And so now we have a base save file that is not played with whatsoever. And it has all the lots that come with the game, all the townies that come with the game. And so in this single save file, this is the save file that I put all of my townie makeovers in as well as my favorite lots that I like to use. So let's say you want to create a new save file for a new let's play. What you'll do is you'll click on the menu and then you'll click on save as, add a new save, and then you'll name this whatever your new Let's Play series is. Let's just say we're doing a Cottage Living Let's Play series. We'll hit OK and now we have a copy of our base save file that has all the changes that you've made with your personal save file for a different Let's Play series. And so I hope this tutorial made sense. If you have any more questions, just shoot me a comment below and I'll try my best to explain it there. But it's a pretty simple and easy process. The hard part is customizing it to your liking. That's the difficult part, but we're going to lead into that right now. Okay, so now that you've created your base save file that you do not play in, I want to reiterate that you don't play, I mean, if you can, you can play with it, but I like that it's unplayed because all the relationships that the townies have are untouched. It is honestly a personal preference, but now that you've created your base save file, it's time to customize it. And we're going to start off with townies first. So with my save file, actually, let me just show you guys my save file. 
All right, so here's my save file. So as you can see, there's still lots here that come with the game. Like I said before, this save file is nowhere completed, <laughs> but I have tackled majority of the townies. So as you can see here, these are the Willow Creek townies all made over. We have the Spencer Kim Lewis household, the Pancakes household, the BFF household, but we also see some unfamiliar faces. And these are townies that I've added to this save file to make it feel more lively. And I'll usually add Sims from previous Let's Play series to my save files. So this is a Sim that I played with previously. This household also comes from a previous save file. And it is very vital to have lots of Sims in your save file. So so that your sims can meet a wide variety of sims. That and the fact that I also use the No Random Townies mod by Zero, and I'll go more into depth about that mod in the mod segment, but what that mod basically does is it prevents the game from spawning sims, which answers the question that I always get about why I'd never have random townies in my game. However, it also prevents the game from spawning NPC sims like vendors, bartenders, DJs, and it's very important that if you use the No Random Townie mod, then you need to make sure you have enough NPC sims in your game to be placed in those NPC roles. So a great source for NPC sims is of course the gallery and my ultimate favorite creator to get NPC townies from is Sims on the Rope. And as you can see here, they have a bunch of townies. They've grouped them into different categories. We have NPC service sims and all these sims come with NPC jobs. They've also made townies to populate your game as well. And in the description, it says that they come with skills, likes, additional traits, lifestyles, and nice outfits. Fit. So all normal looking Sims and this creator is a lifesaver for my save file. You guys, I've literally downloaded so many of their townies into my save file and majority of them take up the NPC roles in my game. I also grab townies from Tumblr. I know my go-to creator on Tumblr to get my Sims from is Nazuri. And look at these townies. They are so cute. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Oh, I don't think this one's available. Oh, so yeah, Nazari is definitely one of my go-tos. Another question I frequently get is how to download townies into your save file. What you'll do is you'll click on the townies that you want. And down here in the lower right corner, there's a place household button. you will click on that and you can place them anywhere you want. I typically place NPC sims on a blank lot. So we'll put them here in Newcrest. And then once they've been placed down, I evict them from the slot. And so now they're currently not in the world. So yeah, it is super easy to add Sims to your save file. If you want to populate your world and add them to existing houses, what you'll do is you'll put in the free real estate sheet and then go back to the gallery, click on a household you want, and you'll be able to place the household in any home, no matter the price. So we'll place them in this mansion right here. Now the household resides in this mansion here. And because I don't have all the packs, we have a townie that's topless, but I usually give all of my townies makeovers anyways and add a bit of CC to them. So that is an issue for me. All right, so now that we've talked about townies and how to populate your save file, now we're gonna talk about lots and how to add lots to make your gameplay more realistic and fun. So if you watch my Let's Play series, you know that I typically stay in one world. For my Mimi and Say My Shuno Let's Play series, I typically have Mimi stay in Say My Shuno unless she is traveling for a vacation or to visit her family. But for the most part, she stays in this world because I find it unrealistic for her to maybe go to the gym in Oasis Springs. And then when she's done with the gym in Oasis Springs, she'll go grab lunch in Brindleton Bay and then maybe hang out with her friends all the way in Copperdale. To me, that isn't realistic. And I like limiting myself to one world just because it also makes the game much more engaging when I do have her travel to other worlds for vacation vacation and other events. And so with that being said, I try to have a variety of lots in each world. I try to have a few restaurants, a gym, a nightclub, and a bar in each world. And so shameless plug, but if you need lots for your save file, I do have a few on my gallery. I also have some townie makeovers on my gallery as well, but I have all of these lots in my personal save file. 
But to reiterate about having your sims stay in the world that they live in, I like to switch out my lots to make the gameplay more interesting. So in my Mimi and Sam My Let's Play series, I usually switch out this restaurant right here for a gym whenever Mimi needs to go to the gym. But we have a karaoke bar here. We have a nightclub here. Oh, no, it's just a bar. Okay. <laughs> But we have a few restaurants here, both on my gallery. This is the Bistro Italia. And actually, let me just show them to you real quickly. So here's what the Bistro Italia looks like. It was originally created by Gemma underscore 033, but unfortunately they removed the restaurant from their gallery. So I uploaded it to mine and I absolutely love this restaurant so much. It's definitely one of my favorites. And the view in this restaurant is amazing. It is so amazing. But here's what the restaurant looks like. I would definitely suggest having this in your save file. And here's another restaurant that I have in Say My Shino. This is the Shiki Asian Fusion restaurant. And it is originally made by Bot Spots, but I have my version on the gallery. Here's what it looks like. But I also wanted to share a few of my favorite builders that I typically put their lots in my save file. Chinook01 is a good creator. I'm currently using their auditorium in our high school for my high school years let's play series, but I love all their builds so much. Cat Sar is another great builder. I love their lots a lot too. I'm using their Stargazer Lounge in my Mimi and Sam Shuna Let's Play series. Another phenomenal builder is Sim Cubies. I love their builds so much. Literally all the lots from Tartosa in my save fall are by Sim Cubies. The restaurant that Mimi and Dirk ate at for brunch, as well as the resort that they stayed at. You should definitely check them out. They are very underrated. And of course we have our girl Lil Simsy. I love her build so much. I like to think that they're very minimal and my build style is very, very similar to hers. Here is the old Salt House restaurant that I'm absolutely in love with, but these are all a handful of my favorite builders. Of course, there are so many more, but I don't want this video to be too long. So we're gonna move on to the next segment and that is mods that I'm using in my game to make my game feel more realistic. So the first mod doesn't really enhance my save file, but I'm gonna include it anyways because I know I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about it. The first mod is these map replacements by 20th Century Plum Bob. So as you can see here, Sam Shuno just looks so much better. It looks much more livelier. And I didn't think this mod was such a necessity until I finally downloaded my game and I love this mod so much. It just makes the game feel so much more alive. Like the default maps, are so pitiful compared to this. Like this is amazing. I'll show you a few more. So here's Willow Creek's map. Here's Oasis Springs new map. And I think this one is so much better than the original. The original one is so sad compared to this. Like I am obsessed. I am obsessed with this mod. And then here is Newcrest. So the next two mods I'm gonna talk about are pretty vital and highly suggest that if you're able to have mods in your game, you need these two mods and that is the MC Command Center by Deaderpool and UI Cheats mod by Wirbusu. And we're gonna cover the UI Cheats extension first. So I've already touched on this in a previous favorite mods video. I'll have that video linked in the description, but what this mod does, it basically allows you to perform various cheats by directly clicking on the user interface if you need to adjust your sims household funds all you need to do is right click the funds and you're able to enter value here and set the amount but what i like to do with the ui cheats extension is prep for a let's play series and so for my high school years let's play series it takes place during the fall season and so what i did to change the season in my save file all i did is i right clicked on this season icon here and then i clicked on fall And now it is automatically fall in my game. I like to use the UI Cheats extension because it's just easy to set up Let's Play series with this. So let's say I want my son to be a certain age. All I need to do is just right click on the age meter and I'm able to adjust the Sims age. So let's say that she is 24 days of being a young adult and now it has been adjusted. And this works hand in hand with the MC Command Center. So to access the MC Command Center, all you need to do is click on your sim and then click on MC Command Center. And let's say that I want Georgia to be good at gardening. What I can do is I can click on MC Cheats, then Cheat Sim Info, then Skill Cheats and set skills to a certain level. And you know what? I think I want her to be skilled in baking as well and maybe knitting too. And so once you've selected a set of skills, you'll be prompted to set the skill level and we're going to set it to five. 
And so now those skills that we selected will say level five. Another thing that I like about this mod when it comes to realistic gameplay for my save file, I will click on any computer in my son's household, click on the MC command center option. And now there is a bunch of modules that you're able to adjust the settings for. And so another frequently asked question is what is my age span set to for my save file? And I feel like it is a mixture between normal and long lifespan. So I'll just quickly show you guys what I have these settings set on. So for baby, I have it set to three days. Toddler is set to 14. Child is set to 21. Teen is also set to 21. Young adult is set to 42. Adults is set to 96. And elder is set to 48. As you guys know, I like to play at a slow pace with my sims. I find that the age span duration for the life stages works for me. And so another key setting that I have in my game is in the population module. And if you go down here to other settings and click on maximum sims in zone. This setting will determine the amount of sims that will spawn on a lot and so if you notice in my let's play series that my community lots are a lot more crowded, a lot more livelier, it's because I basically doubled the amount of sims that can be able to spawn onto the lot. And again, this is only effective if you put a bunch of townies in your save file. Otherwise, not that many sims will spawn onto the lot. Okay, so we're going to track back to the no randoms townie mod. As I said before, this mod prevents any new sims from spawning into your game. And so you can get this mod from Zero's Patreon. And I like to point out that I have a link for all the mods that are mentioned in this video linked in the description. It'll probably be all compiled into a Tumblr post, but I'm going to give a quick tutorial on how to download the Zero Townies mod because I have received a few comments asking for one. So what you'll need to do is you'll click on this file here. And if you have high school years you will also click on this file and so now that you have the files downloaded what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this folder and you'll adjust the files that you have in this folder based on your preference and the packs that you have in your game. So for me, I don't have a majority of the cult packs. So that includes Strangerville, Realm of Magic, Journey to Batu, and Vampires. So I'll remove those from the folder because they're not needed. And I'm also going to remove the add-ons as well because I don't need them. Also, I'm going to drag this into the folder as well. And so once you're done adjusting all the packs that you have in this folder, you're going to directly drag this into your mods folder and that is all you need to do all right so the final mod that we're going to be touching on in this video is the sim spawn overhaul mod by lothario and i think this is the mod that really makes my game feel so realistic so here's what the description says do you ever think it's weird that Bella Goff will go from Willow Creek all the way to Solani for a morning jog? How about the fact that stray animals can only be found in Brindleton Bay? This mod aims to fix those quirks and many others by changing how the game spawns sims for various situations. So yes, this mod is so, so important, especially for celebrities in Delso Valley. You will no longer see Judith Ward just casually strolling in Brindleton Bay. You will more than likely only see her in Delso Valley. And you're able to adjust the settings for this mod by shift clicking on any mailbox. So if we shift click on George's mailbox, you'll see a new option, which is called Lothario mod settings. And then I also have a phone call overhaul mod by Lothario. I have already touched on this in a previous mods video. Again, I'll have it linked in the description, but we're going to click on some spawn overhaul. And as you can see here, we can adjust the settings and I have all these settings enabled and I'll read them to you guys. So we have local pedestrians. So again, if a sim lives in Samai Shuno, you will more than likely only see them in Samai Shuno. And so the same thing can be applied to prefer local venue sims. So if your sim goes to a restaurant in, let's say, Brindleton Bay, then all the guests at the restaurant will more than likely be from Brindleton Bay. And there's also a few other settings here. So we have homeless service sims, and this says, when enabled, sims such as bartenders and stall vendors will always be homeless sims. So sims that do not currently reside in any world. Fix NPC out outfits when enabled randomly generated NPC outfits will always be replaced with an everyday outfit. So no more ugly outfits you guys. 
no more ugly outfits. We also have no pedestrians in bad weather, so if there is heavy rain, a storm, or a blizzard, the game will not spawn any sims. And then a very, very vital setting, animals everywhere. When enabled, stray animals and dog walking sims will spawn outside of Bendleton Bay. And if you're watching my high school years Let's Play series, you know about Mochi, and Mochi is a stray that spawns at the high school from time to time. And that is only possible because of this mod. So again, I just wanna reiterate that this mod is so vital, it's so important, and this is what makes my game feel very realistic. Okay, so I covered how to create your own custom save file, but let's say that you don't want to go through all the work of creating a save file. That is completely understandable. Making a save file is very time consuming. And so we're going to end off the video with a few of my favorite save files that I like to play with when I either get bored with my personal save file or I'm just too lazy to update it. Okay, so the first save file isn't really a detailed save file. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It is seriously Sims blank save. And so if you want a save file that is but as naked, like no builds in it, no townies whatsoever, then this is a save file for you. And I like using this save file to put all of my work in progress builds in. All right, so the next save file I'm gonna be touching on is by Lil Simsy, and it is her Simsy save file. But what she's done with her save file is that she has renovated every community lot. She's filled all the empty lots with new homes and locations. And she's also created CC free townies that fill all the empty houses in the game. Another great save file is Simlessy Save 2.0. And I forgot to mention Simlessy earlier. Like I said, there's so many builders that I love in the Sims community and Simlessy is definitely one of them. I am obsessed with their builds and they have a save file that's compiled of all their builds in it. And they've also added a few townies to their save file as well. And then the final save file that I'll be sharing in this video is Rat Boy Sims Rat Save 1.2. And again, a phenomenal builds in this save and added townies to this save file with their own descriptions and stories. And I'm also gonna quickly show you guys how to download save files into your game. So I currently have the Rat Save 1.2 up and we're going to go down to the download link and we're gonna download the save file and it's gonna download as a zip. You're going to extract this. So once you've extracted the save file, what you're gonna do is you're going to copy it. Then you're going to paste this in the saves folder, not the mods folder, the saves folder. So you'll need to go to documents, then electronic arts, the Sims 4, and then go down to saves and paste the save file into this folder. So the next time you open up your game, the save file should be in your game. All right, so we've opened up the game and as you can see here, I have the save files that I've mentioned. We have the rat save file, the simsy save, the simlessy save, and then a little bit further down is the blank save file by Seriously Sims. And like I said before, I use this save file for all the builds that I'm currently working on. But as I mentioned before, I don't have all the occult packs, so I will be missing all that content whenever I load into the save file, which is fine. But we're just gonna play with the missing content so I can show you guys what the save file looks like. So this is what Ratboy Sims save file looks like in all of its beauty. And look how gorgeous these lots look like, y'all. Here's what Oasis Springs looks like. Oh, it is so nice. And then here's what Newcrest looks like. And Newcrest is always empty when you start a new save file in game. But as you can see here, Ratboy Sims has added all these lots to Newcrest. So now it's like a completely new world. And as I mentioned before, they've added more townies to the save file. And they've also added descriptions, you guys. So this is such a detailed save file. And I definitely would recommend everyone to play with this save file at least once, at least once. All right, you guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope this video was very helpful for you guys on creating your own custom save file. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. And again, thank you so much for 25,000 subs. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. The link to the giveaway will be in the description below, as well as all the save files, the mods, Everything that I've mentioned in this video will be linked down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and comment. It would be much appreciated. Please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next tutorial video. And I'll see you guys in my next video.